Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Jenkins Governance Meeting. Today is April 21st. Uh, we have several contributors on the call and several future contributors, as you may see. Um, but yeah, today we have a few items in the agenda, like discussing uh, the recent oh, yeah, 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 release, yeah. uh, etc. Then we will talk about terminology updates, upcoming contributor summit, and various uh, LFX tools we are trying to adopt in the project. So that's the agenda. And if you want to propose any additional items, just put them uh, to the list and we will discuss them. Okay, so the first topic is uh, 2.273 release. Uh, okay, so yeah, we had uh, to make out of we had to make out of the security release uh, because uh, there was a security release performed by JT, which potentially leads to denial of service attacks. So yeah, we decided to cut the release and we encourage everyone to update. That's it. So we will still have uh, .4 LCS release in two weeks as scheduled, and nothing changes about that. Mm -hmm. So for .4, we should have uh, the release candidate today or tomorrow, and once uh, it's done, we will announce it uh, through Jenkins uh, developer channels, so we can, we can uh, continue working on that. Okay. So the new LCS baseline selection. As you may see, there is a developer list thread. And in this thread, we have an ongoing discussion of what LCS baseline we want to take. And yeah, the current plan is that we will proceed is 2.289 released yesterday. So unless there are serious issues in six weeks, it will become the new LCS baseline. And all the enhancements integrated into the Jenkins core will be released. So, there are some open questions. For example, we haven't integrated tables to divs um, okay. update for run summaries proposed by Team Jacom. Um, we also didn't integrate some other changes we would like uh, to have, like a removal of common digester. And most likely, these changes will go into the September LCS release. So it will take some time. And yeah, if you have any strong opinions, please vote. That's it. Any comments, questions? Nope, sorry for to me. Okay. So another update, um, over last two weeks, we had a discussion in the mailing, um, mailing list about duplicating Ruby and Python runtimes. So we have a consensus that we are doing that. Uh, we are going to announce that. Thanks uh, a lot to Gavin for the blog post draft. So this blog, uh, post draft is ready for review and hopefully we will merge it within a few days. Again, um, we are going to apply some changes to the Jenkins core, like removing uh, uh, permit lists for Ruby class serialization. And these changes will be effective in the um, uh, September LCS release. So there will be quite a lot of time for uh, Jenkins users to adopt it. Uh, Gavin, would you like to add something else? I don't think so. So the only, I mean, we would like to have more reviewers on that blog post, but the only real blockers right now is making sure the open graph image is clear. That doesn't scare people. Cause that was one of the concerns. We didn't want to say we're not supporting Ruby. It's that we're not supporting the Ruby runtimes. Uh, that needs clarification. And uh, there was some debate about updating the JEP. So that has to get done, but I don't think either of those are blocker for the blog post to go out. I'm not sure. Hmm. I took an action item uh, to update the JEP7, but yeah, I'm not 100% confident that I will be able to do it today. Really depends. Okay. So, but anyway, thanks to all contributors and hopefully it won't be a major impact on uh, the Jenkins plugin ecosystem. We have something like 15 plugins affected. And the biggest one, uh, GitLab hook plugin is largely re replaced by uh, GitLab multi-branch plugin. So we should be fine. So anything else on this topic? I'm looking forward to it because it's all the metadata is really screwed up. So the plugin site has trouble processing it each time. So I'm happy for it to be gone. Me too. 
Though we still need to add support for some stone pages on the plugin side because uh, there is growing demand uh, due to the publishing of plugins and uh, alpha versions. So if you could somehow support them on the plugin side, it would be great. Yeah. But it's a completely separate topic we could discuss. I think I wrote, wrote up a to-do item or like a to-do item to process that same list that Update Center has. And then just instead of saying that plugin doesn't exist, it would be very clearly that plugin is depublished, go here instead type thing. So mm -hmm. it, it's coming eventually. Maybe. Okay, that's great. Then thank you. Okay, so what's next? Outreach programs. So we have um, three ongoing outreach programs at the moment. Uh, one is Google Summer of Code. For Google Summer of Code, uh, the application period is over. We've got more than twenty proposals to different projects. There are strong proposals, so we are confident that we will have a number of uh, projects announced. The announcement will have, uh, happen on May thirteenth. Over the next months, uh, mentors and organizations will be reviewing applications, forming mentor teams, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, so far, so good. So you said we're, the announcement is whether or not they got accepted? Uh, yes. So the announcement of accepted projects, because there is a complicated process. This year, it's complicated even more because we participate uh, under the umbrella of the Continuous Delivery Foundation. So we will also need to, to balance uh, Jenkins applications with applications to other projects. Uh, we are currently working with other work means from CDF, uh, but yeah, it will take a while to conclude that. And on May 13th, there will be white announcement for all the Google Summer of Code organizations. Before that, we are not allowed uh, to talk about uh, what projects we would like to accept. <laughs> so if you're interested to mentor some of them, please join uh, the mentor team and then yeah, you will get all the insights. Do okay. we already have? Do we already have an idea on how many um, other projects from the CDF submitted IDs? Mm, so uh, the IDs have been submitted uh, by five projects, in, okay. uh, including um, uh, Jenkins. So basically, there were project IDs uh, for Artilius, for Screwdriver, for Spinnaker. Um, okay, I was wrong. There was uh, four projects. There were no ideas submitted for Tikton, but we had a Tikton interoperability project ID in the Jenkins okay. project. And there were no ideas submitted uh, who's left, uh, Spinnaker. Uh, but uh, for Spinnaker, there is out of band application. Okay. So, yeah, let's see how it goes. Okay. So, yeah, I think it will be a good uh, year. So hopefully we'll have a number of really good projects. I stay tuned for announcements. Okay, Google season of dogs. We are not accepted. Um, thanks a lot to Mark and uh, all other contributors for the application. We have started uh, the retrospective. Um, yeah, I cannot uh, really say why we were not accepted right now, uh, because uh, yeah, mm, uh, so the um, organizers don't communicate feedback. This year they have accepted only 30 projects. So it's lower than in previous year. And uh, yeah, it's safe to assume that one of the main reasons that they wanted to uh, give an opportunity to other projects uh, because we participated last year. And yeah, so for those who are interested, we have some uh, money in the coffers. So technically we can run our own program using LFX mentorship. So if there are project ideas, if you're interested to be a mentor for a documentation project, please let us know. Okay. okay. So the last uh, program we have now is Shikot Africa. So we have uh, five uh, mentors work can uh, on uh, Jenkins pipeline documentation as a part of this uh, uh, program. Uh, there were multiple requests submitted by the contributors. Uh, the program ends um, by the end of April, and hopefully we will get a summary blog post on Jenkins IO soon. So you, you said there's five students or five mentors? Uh, five mentees, but yeah, we also have five mentors, I believe. So. But yeah, there is no dedicated project, so basically it's uh, collaboration. Okay. 
So what's next for us? Any comments on outreach programs? Yeah, sorry, I spent too much time on updates. And yeah, another update, terminology updates. So we recover this topic. We stopped in August uh, by uh, choosing the name uh, for Jenkins controller. So now it's an official name. We made some recommendations about localizations, but we haven't made final decisions about uh, um, uh, the subterms uh, for Jenkins controller. So yeah, I pasted screenshots. So for example, we still have no formal name for uh, Jenkins as a node, for Jenkins web interface, etc. In many cases, uh, the decision is straightforward. Uh, but still, uh, I would like to finalize uh, these decisions. And uh, I started this thread, so we could uh, just do that. So if you have any suggestions how we name particular items, uh, or if you see any items missing in the list, there is a link to a Google Doc, uh, please uh, comment and yeah, we'll uh, accommodate that. And then hopefully we'll be able to facilitate contributions so that we make all these changes. For the change I replaced, displayed on the screenshot, Daniel Beck has already submitted a pull request. So it shouldn't be a big deal, but yeah, there are other places where, which we would need to update. Okay. Anything on, on terminology? Okay. So, yeah, then the Jenkins Contributor Summit. So, quick update is confirmed for June 25th. The Plantains Delivery Foundation has added it uh, to the registration page. Um, we got almost 100 registrations by now. So, yeah, it doesn't mean that we will uh, get 200 participants because, you know, it's an online event, especially a free online event, uh, but still the numbers are quite good. So what's next there, we still need to finalize the agenda. There is a Google Doc. And if you have any ideas about uh, what are the major topics we should discuss, please add them there. We have some uh, important topics like uh, Jenkins 3 um, and uh, basically collaboration and interoperability with Jenkins X and Tecton. This is something to be kind of confirmed by now. Also, I want to discuss Java 17 support and, and yeah, any other topics, it would be great. And actually, I wanted to sync up with Evelina because one of the items uh, we could have there is actually a presentation by Jenkins users so that we could get a number of Jenkins adopters who just present and share their feedback on Jenkins and their vision how it should be evolving and the their main demands. So we have never had such items uh, at contributor summits, but uh, I think it would be a good thing to do. Uh, yeah, I can certainly reach out to, to uh, uh, some of my colleagues from FE Code uh, or customers. Uh, mm -hmm. so what kind of, what kind of uh, thing you, 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 you think would be interesting to hear and how long could it be, for example? Yeah, that's a good question because we need to define the format. Mm -hmm. um, so any ideas are welcome. Uh, it depends on uh, the number of companies we get, the number of users we get. But yeah, I think uh, that, so it shouldn't be a one hour talk for sure. Uh, it, so it should be maybe a relatively short summary of how they use Jenkins, what uh, they, is their vision. And then also some time for a discussion. Mm, I, I think it would be it could be cool to exactly <laughs> exactly what you're writing. Like uh, the, the the easiest uh, uh, group of people to to uh, uh, convince to present would be those that are proud of something. So they believe okay. they did something fun with Jenkins. And, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, I think that that might might also be you know fun to watch. But uh, but there there probably could be a space. Uh, uh, let's see if someone will want to fill it. Where where the the challenges could also be uh, mentioned. So uh, you know they 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 kind of they can talk directly to contributors or not directly, but actually have mm -hmm. them in the audience or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and some things that were not solved yet, like things that you know, like guys were were we we're, were happy with the most of the things, but there's this one that is kind of uh, mm -hmm. painful for us, and and we're still struggling with it. I I think that that's uh, have to be open to that too, but. Uh, mm -hmm. And then the, 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 the length, I, I think, I like 15, 20 minutes, uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be deep dive, but, but something that is kind of, you know, long enough to, to uh, so they can present actually something, uh, but, uh, but uh, doesn't have to go through, don't have to go through, through, through uh, implementation details. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agree. So we have plenty of time uh, to finalize the agenda to reach out to participants. So the Computer Summit on, is on June 25th. And we have full freedom regarding forming our agenda. We will be using uh, our own Zoom platform uh, for the conference. So, yeah, let's keep working. And yeah, any ideas you have, any proposals you have, let's do that and discuss that. And yeah, same for everyone on the call. So any ideas are uh, more than welcome. But then uh, let's say I, 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 I hear from some of my colleagues that they are like, wow, we want to do it. Do, should we start a um, thread in um, developers mailing list or, or how do we handle it? So we could just use Google Doc for initial collaboration. So for uh -huh. example, we can uh, start a list of interested users there. And then, depending on how the discussion goes, we can uh, move uh -huh. elsewhere. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I I just think it would be nice that you know I'm not uh, just passing the information back and forth, but there's communication open. So if if uh, uh, you can create a document and link link it here, then then we can just kind of you know kick it off. Okay. Yeah. And that's good. Maybe the advocacy and outreach channel. Is also a good place to chat if you if you have ideas and don't quite feel comfortable yet submitting them. Yeah, it's also a good channel. Mm -hmm. oh, I can never spell this word. Advocacy and. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Are there any other major topics we would like to put to the agenda? Oh, like, um, so just related to uh, the Jenkins Contributor Summit, because this is taking place during CDCon, I, can I mention that the, um, the Jenkins Award is going to be taking place also at CDCon, and the award application is being currently open until next week, April 30th. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I just want to share that information just in case anybody wants to um, nominate our, you know, uh, um, one of our winners or okay, somebody. Could, could you put a link in this document? Yes, I will do that. I'll put it in the document. Yeah, uh, so there will be a blog post uh, which we plan uh, to publish tomorrow if everything goes fine. So Raksan uh, from CDF has submitted a pull request. Um, there are a few minor changes to be done there, but it should be ready to go soon. And yeah, there are some changes in the program this year, and I guess uh, these changes are good. So firstly, there is a public nomination process. You just submit a GitHub issue, uh, well, comment to a GitHub issue with justification, etc. And secondly, any Jenkins contributor is eligible. Because for example, over the past years, uh, for example, Cloudbeast employees and some other people were not eligible uh, to get the award. Uh, this year, you can nominate any contributor regardless of affiliation. Okay, so the blog post is coming soon, and yeah, thanks a lot to Alice for bringing it up, because yeah, it should have been in uh, the news. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what else happens at CDCon? We will have more than six uh, Jenkins-related talks. Uh, there will be also Jenkins birth, birth of Feather. There's likely that we will have a kind of booth or open Q&A session to be announced. 
and we will get some time uh, in the during the keynote for major announcements. So we still need to, to have these major announcements, but yeah, it's something up to us. Uh, but yeah, if we have them, uh, then yeah, we can utilize uh, this opportunity. Okay. Anything else regarding Contributor Summit and CDCon? Is, I've, okay, I haven't been since I was essentially a vendor at Jenkins. Is there anything that the board needs to do at CDCon? Should I mm -hmm. be taking the time off? Just show up if I can show up. Yeah, so there is Contributor Summit and there is a CDCon. For CDCon, yeah. I proposed um, a kind of uh, open panel with uh, Jenkins Governance Board members. Um, well, uh, it wasn't accepted, mostly because of really tight uh, schedule and uh, resilience of applications uh, with a focus on actually uh, practical use cases and adopters. But we can do this session, for example, as a part of uh, Contributor Summit or we can plan it, uh, let's say, as a separate session around uh, this deep on time frame. So for the Jenkins board specifically, there is nothing uh, where we need to participate as governance board. But for the contributor summit, of course, everyone is welcome to take any area. So for example, UI, UX, static analysis, uh, who knows, any topic we can add there and see how we could uh, facilitate. Sounds good. Okay. So moving on. Okay, LFX uh, tool adoption updates. And yeah, before that, I had a separate violet for each tool, but yeah, I'll do a really quick summary of what's going on. So LFX security, basically it's sneak. Um, after the contributor summit in February, we agreed that we would like to adopt that. Uh, we have experienced a few fatal issues with this tool. Uh, so for example, uh, yeah, you cannot uh, configure ignore lists for CVs. And with Jenkins dependency management, uh, it's quite difficult because we've got something like 200,000 false positives uh, across the DECA system. Uh, so we cannot use LFX security as is. I started a discussion with uh, the Linux Foundation uh, team um, about how we could do that. Later, we got um, the Sneak team involved. And what is the current plan is that um, Sneak and LFX security want to work on a feature which would allow uh, projects to actually manage uh, their configurations. And they invite uh, Jenkins to be a pilot project and uh, they want oh, to collaborate on that. So basically to get a good case study on that. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, thank you. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so yeah, just heads up, there will be a meeting next week with um, SNEAK yeah. and uh, LFX yeah. security. Um, yeah. If anyone is interested to participate, let yeah. me know. Yeah. Uh, right now, I'm just inc invited a few yeah. people. And uh, if we need any special mandate for these conversations, yeah, I'm also happy to discuss that because I just started oh. the, wow. as a contributor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, since we are going into more or less formal mm -hmm. collaboration with Sneak, uh, yeah, maybe we need a wider discussion for that. But yeah, I really think that it's beneficial to the Jenkins project if ah, we get uh, LFX security. So Olivier is interested to participate. Anyone else? Okay. I will uh, put uh, the update uh, to the mailing list once uh, it's done. And yeah, I'll take an action item to just uh, that, yeah, Olivia, Mark, and uh, yeah, somebody else. But yeah, we'll keep uh, the progress of the, as public as possible. I don't think that it will require any kind of NDAs. But yeah, until we talk to Sneak, I cannot say for sure.
I just noticed there was a chat. Uh, what is the Twitter link for? Uh, Twitter link was uh, for contributor nominations uh, for yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. Okay. We'll leave that one then. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, easy CLA. So it's basically a rework of the contributor uh, license agreement flow uh, to relieve uh, the governance board uh, and uh, Jenkins contributors from the current tedious flow if they want to get special permissions. Uh, so um, yeah, I pasted the quote there. So we have two options. One is uh, to have independent Jenkins account. Another one is to have um, an account as a part of the continuous delivery foundation because the continuous delivery foundation already has an account, which is currently used only for Tecton. So um, what account we use should be more or less transparent for end contributors, but it may impact uh, how we manage um, um, easy CLA. So question to everyone, uh, do we want to have a self-managed account or to go with CDF? So if I remember the mailing list correctly, the shared account means that they only have to sign it once for all the shared accounts or all the shared projects. Yes. While a separate account would mean they'd have to sign it once for Jenkins and once for Tecton and once for everything else. Yeah, that's correct. So uh, what, what I was just gonna say, I sort of think we should have individual, but I don't sign up uh, CLAs who no really care. Yeah, I'm the other direction lobbying that we should we should just use the shared so that we don't have to go through maintaining our own. But what are the downsides? Oleg, do you see any negatives from from choosing to do it outside? We would have to create our own account with LFX or is there more to it? Does it significantly increase our burden? I don't think it would significantly increase our burden. Also, we have um, a few special requests. So, for example, I brought a question about security contributor uh, agreement because currently we don't have one and it might make sense to have one, especially for company contributors. Uh, so, yeah, going uh, with own account uh, has some merits, uh, but I don't have a strong opinion because I don't have insights how much time it would take to manage so the autonomy the autonomy from a separate account sounds good to me then understood thanks any other strong opinions hey now weak opinions are fine too anyone have weak opinions i think take the simple solution <laughs> the simple solution would be the best which is which one's the simpler I think just choose to the account that we already have. So but we don't have one, CDF has one. Yeah, so the CDF one, I mean. Would it mean that someone who contributes to Jenkins and to another CDF account would have to... to, to yeah, also uh, it may cause some political questions because, for example, some companies may not want to allow their contributors to contribute, let's say, to spinning care. Uh, and by doing this civil card uh, contributor license agreement, basically you permit it for the list of employees. Unless we find a way to somehow scope uh, these contributions, which is not a part of the current CCLA. I mean, I think since the agreement is so easy to sign, especially with this, it makes sense to separate them and just keep it simple. Okay. So, Uli, you prefer to go with CDF, right? I personally would prefer to go with independent accounts. Yeah, if it's easier, but I don't have a problem with uh, using an independent account. I just fear that we have a lot mm -hmm. to do to get one. Okay, I'll abstain. Olivier, did I misunderstand your, your, your desire? Was it your recommendation to go with CDF or to have an independent account? To have an independent account. So we have one okay. specific to Jenkins. So if someone, I mean, want to contribute to Jenkins only, 
I mean, that's kind of weird because we joined the CF, so we, we are supposed to have, I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean both, both options are fine to me. I, I just like, I, I would go with independent by default, but yeah. I don't have strong opinion here. Okay. So what do others think? Well, no, no strong opinion either. Alisa? Yeah, I don't have a specific opinion. Okay. I guess uh, we need to bring up uh, this topic in the dev list. So we, I don't think we have, uh, we are ready to make a conclusion now anyway. Uh, because yeah, it needs to be discussed in the dev list first. Um, and, and, what, and, and what would happen with the current uh, CLA that we have? Uh, so the current CLA would be agreed that the, during the previous discussions, we would ask active contributors and companies to resign it. Okay. Because uh, the CCLA uh, and the ICLA from uh, the Linux Foundation will be different. So it's largely the same as ours, but they adding additional um, items uh, to specify how easy CLA works. Um, and uh, also to address a case when uh, the signing uh, contributor is not uh, uh, registered with uh, easy CLA. So you have whatever uh, vice president to sign uh, this CCLA, but this vice president doesn't have a Linux Foundation account. So um, they're doing uh, whatever these uh, legal things. Uh, it doesn't uh, change uh, the CLA in principle, so it's Apache uh, CLA. Thanks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, yeah, we'll uh, start um, a discussion in the dev list. Uh, we'll continue the existing thread. Uh, but yeah, thanks to, uh, to everyone for the feedback. Okay. So going next, LFX crowd funding, no real updates. So it's like we discussed before, I still have an action item to add other board members uh, to the Expensify backend so that uh, I'm not uh, the single person bottleneck. But after it's done, we can actually conclude that it's official uh, treasury. And I also have an action item to reach out uh, to uh, SPI and to confirm the expectations about our treasury there just to make sure that we can keep money as uh, long as we need. Mm -hmm. Okay. LFX mentorship, again, no major updates. Uh, there were some, was some data loss during the migration from community bridge to LFX mentorship. Uh, we just fixed it uh, together with uh, Linux Foundation support. So now Sladen uh, Nunez is officially listed as a graduated uh, mentee uh, from the LFX mentorship. But yeah, basically that's it. Um, another update that uh, I've started getting some notifications about uh, mentors wanting to join the project. Uh, so they enabled this feature on LFX uh, mentorship. And yeah, maybe we'll need to do something about that because right now we don't have a confirmed open uh, program for LFX mentorship, but yeah, some people assume that we do have one. So, so these are people wanting to mentor or wanting to, to be mentored? Is that your same question? Yeah, so currently our program is not open for applications. So mentors cannot apply, but mentors apparently can apply. And uh, our problem, uh, which has been uh, brought up by uh, one contributor, uh, Sagar Rotikar, uh, that uh, yeah, basically uh, our um, project uh, on LFX mentorship is abstract. It's basically contribute to Jenkins, and we figure out uh, the details later. So yeah, with the current arrangement, um, the mentorship submission doesn't quite work. So Oleg, is that a place where I should be considering submitting a proposal to do something like Jenkins on Kubernetes as a 
an LFX mentorship thing? Yep. Would, that would be a, a replacement. And, and can LFX mentorships be crowd? Can be, can they be funded? Yes. Or is it only, oh, so these can, we could fund the mentee in that case. Yeah. So we have budget uh, on LFX uh, crowdfunding. So LFX crowdfunding can be used to pay uh, uh, contributor stipends uh, to mentees. Um, we cannot use it uh, for paying salaries, uh, but uh, uh, stipends uh, like encouraging payments uh, can be done. And yeah, I'm not uh, alert to uh, discuss what is the difference. Uh, so, but yeah, there is some clear distinction in uh, the Linux Foundation guidelines. So, but what it means for us that we can at any moment run our own program, like we did this sledding for JCASC developer tools, basically for Visual Studio Code plugin for JCASC. We can do something like that at any moment. So basically that's it on LFX mentorship. Do we need to give more people access? So you're not, a, I feel bad every time you get more work, so. Well, uh, in the case of LFX mentorship, uh, we had uh, multiple mentors. So Mark Jackson, I believe Mark is registered there and there was somebody else, I believe Tim Jacob. Uh, but yeah, uh, so LFX mentorship is a bit complicated uh, in terms of management. Uh, we had a few se sessions with the Linux Foundation product management about uh, mentorship crowdfunding, and uh, they're really working on improving these tools. Uh, so they're getting better and better, but yeah. So any contributions are welcome, but right now it's not a big deal because you know, basically we don't use these tools too much. Crowdfunding is just a tool we should use. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. So what else? So there is a thread I started in advocacy and outreach about uh, promoting Jenkins X3 release. So, so Jenkins X3 now again includes support for Jenkins. Uh, this uh, Jenkins standalone controllers uh, or is uh, cloud native setups with Jenkins file runner and Tikton. Uh, there is documentation about that, the announcements. And I think that we should uh, some promote this release from the Jenkins channels uh, just because yeah, the, now there is a lot of opportunities for collaboration between projects and I think that we should use these opportunities where possible. Does... I'm curious because I don't know the history. Why did they drop Jenkins? Did, is it because they thought that everyone was switching to, to Tekton and then uh, we and then Jenkins didn't support it? Yeah, so there was a desire to go to a fully cloud native system. Um, they had basically two modes. Uh, one uh, was uh, uh, classic Jenkins. Yeah, another one was uh, serverless Jenkins, basically powered by Jenkins file runner as a pipeline engine. Uh, but yeah, this uh, mode uh, has concerns about resource uh, utilization and about flexibility. And uh, yeah, the Jenkins X team decided to go with Tekton and they deprecated uh, the Jenkins file runner and Jenkins engines in Jenkins 2. They have never been really removed from the code base. They were still available, uh, but they were marked as deprecated. And uh, in Jenkins 3, these integrations are replaced by other integrations, which basically use more or less standard approaches like uh, deployment Helm charts, etc. Uh, so they can support uh, Jenkins, Jenkins file runner, and actually pretty much other pipeline engine and service using more or less standard engine. Uh, so, but yeah, from the documentation support for Jenkins and Jenkins pipelines is there again. And for example, James Strachan uh, became a major contributor to the Tikton client plugin. And uh, there was a blog post just published today. So I cordially believe that currently we in the win-win state between uh, Jenkins and Jenkins X projects. And we should use this opportunity. Yeah, no objections from me. Mm -hmm. 
So in the mailing list, there is a li link to Google Doc. In this Google Doc, we, I have um, a couple of tweets so, submitted for review. So not through standard chat, but uh, through this Google Doc. Then uh, yeah, there is um, a draft for the expanded LinkedIn uh, post. And there is also, also talking points for Jenkins blog post, which I haven't uh, even started yet. But you can uh, take a look in this document uh, about uh, the plan and uh, provide some comments. And I've, I've already got quotes from KK and from James Strachan. So we can use these quotes uh, in the blog post or for any other promotion. Uh, and if you want to put your quote, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, just uh, put a suggestion uh, to this Google Doc. Yeah, so right now it's a brain dump and yeah, feel free to contribute. Okay, but yeah, if uh, we agree uh, that we can promote that, I think that yeah, I will use the opportunity, maybe start from tweets and uh, then we will have a blog post maybe next week because this week seemed to be quite busy with blog posts already. And yeah, quick question, budget request. So we have um, a few programs uh, like Shikot Africa, GSOC applications. Uh, we also had uh, several students from France doing uh, pen testing uh, for Jenkins who reported a number of security vulnerabilities. Uh, again, uh, the security team is going to write a blog post soon. Uh, but yeah, what I'm about is that um, we likely need to send some schwag uh, to these contributors. Um, I started uh, a list. Again, uh, there is a threat in and Rich about that. So if somebody has any ideas, for example, maybe Uli had some uh, students working on Jenkins or something like that. Again, we can uh, add uh, this to the distribution list. Um, and um, yeah. Uh, so we still need uh, some budget because um, the Continuous Delivery Foundation is happy to donate uh, a lot of swag for us from their coffers, uh, but uh, they have issue with delivery costs and they cannot fund uh, these delivery costs from this Continuous Delivery Foundation budget this year. So we would need to use Jenkins money and we will also need to use Jenkins money if we want to produce some custom stickers. Because currently what they have in stock is just classic Jenkins. And yeah, you know that uh, evil Jenkins is much more popular. Everybody needs it on the laptop. And uh, there are other stickers. So yeah. So I think that we should produce uh, a few packs. I have some more packs of stickers in Switzerland. And we can send uh, them to yeah. Pinnacle, which packages uh, the deliveries. Uh, but yeah. I would uh, like to request some budget just uh, to have freedom to do that. And uh, I do not want to disturb uh, the Jenkins governance meeting every time I need to spend $50 on a uh, package. So I just wanted to, to ask for a blanket approval for $1,000 so that we coordinate with the advocacy and our uh, see how we spend that. And yeah, let's see. It's my first ride as uh, Jenkins uh, events officer. Before that, Alisa was handling all these requests. Uh, and yeah, I have no idea how much money you would actually need. Uh, but let's see. I have, I have no objections to this. Um, oh. I think, if anything, we want to try to make sure that we don't send sticker bundles to the same six people. Like, try to make sure that it's usually new students whenever possible. But yeah. So. Yeah. So it's for outreach. It's not for paying stipends. It's not for uh, sending something big. It's likely a t shirt, a few stickers, and the yeah, Jenkins socks or something like that. Um, and yeah, well, uh, there is still an open question how many you would like to send. Uh, but yeah, right now, the logistics is quite challenging. Because um, our vendor, I mean, the Linux Foundation's vendor, uh, sends packages only over FedEx. 
And for example, if you want to send a, a T-shirt and a few stickers uh, from uh, the United States to Europe, they asked eighty dollars. Yeah, so if you want uh, to open your Schwack agency and uh, logistics agency, I guess you have great market opportunity because even in the case of Switzerland, it uh, costs uh, less than ten dollars to send this package. But yeah, uh, so we will need to figure it out. Uh, there is ongoing discussion because nobody is happy about uh, the current state of affairs. Um, but yeah, I have a workaround plan for a few upcoming deliveries. You're going to start flying to the various contributors and taking vacation, getting away from Jenkins and giving away stickers. Can I expense a bit? <laughs> you can try. <laughs> so technically, you're the only one that has access to uh, the Expensify? Probably you can. <laughs> well, there is not enough money in Expensify. Uh, but yeah. Okay, I got flying in Europe was really cheap. Not now. But yeah. No, fair enough. Yeah. So, yeah, anyway, let's see. I don't plan to travel anytime soon. And yeah, we still have a lot of money, for example, in GSOC accounts because we reserved uh, money for travel grants for GSOC 2020 participants. Uh, so, yeah, I still have no idea whether we will ever spend them. It's to be decided, but yeah, I don't think that it's the right time for this discussion. Yeah, so I wrote down the three yeses and the no objections. I guess Oleg, you're abstaining. Yeah. Plus one from me. Plus one from me as well. Mm. I've got some budget. <laughs> yeah, thanks so. all. And then the last topic is the new one, DevOps world. Yeah, so I just added that. And um, so I just wanna mention that DevOps world is taking place on September 28th through the 29th. Um, we do plan to have um, the Contributor Summit, Jenkins Contributor Summit there, workshops there, and we're hoping to get in a lot of uh, Jenkins talks. Um, so the CFP is currently open. So I'm hoping that um, we get submissions um, in so, on Jenkins. So same question before, what kind of topics do you want to see? Specifically, we rec recommend people submitting? What kind of topics do we recommend people as, submitting? As a once in a while speaker, I always have trouble deciding what I should talk about. So it's always a good idea to have some like getting started ideas. Like here's, here's things you could talk about. Yeah, yeah, no, I think, I think that's a great one. You know, demos are great. Technical talks is showing how people, how you do certain things, how you solve certain problems. Those are great. Um, uh, case studies, you know, um, are, are also great as well, as long as, you know, you're not pitching a product and I know you wouldn't. Um, and yep. especially if it's coming from somebody from the governance board, can't pass up on that. Right. I, I, I think yeah. the best feedback I ever got after the presentation was where I explained something that I considered uh, almost uh, uh, it's so super easy that that everyone knows it and 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 they don't and they were so happy someone told mm. them because because usually they they don't know it i don't remember what it was and i think uh, you know the more advanced users can can just figure a lot of things out which doesn't mean that we shouldn't have you shouldn't have uh, uh, like more advanced technical presentations i i think they will be exciting too but uh, yeah, the thing that something seems obvious to someone doesn't really mean that it's going to be boring or, or not impressive enough, probably the other way around. Obvious is, I hate, I hate the list. There's an ableist list. Obvious is one of them. So if you ever say, obviously, this is the thing, that's one of those things you just try to avoid because it's not, if you have to say it's obvious, it's obviously not obvious, which is weird because you have to say the word obvious to say that sentence. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. 
actually one thing about the uh, call for papers there was a request in advocacy and outreach seek about having um, a session about how to write uh, a CFP for the conference. So I'm thinking whether we could do it as a, let's say, Jenkins Online Meetup with uh, several contributors uh, uh, doing some quick introduction presentation, what we discussed now, and maybe having a long q &A session. What do you think about that? I think that's a great idea. And it also supplements into the um, a program that Cloud Bees is also offering, which is it's a first come first serve basis, but they're offering um, speaking training, um, public speaking training course. Um, it will be a group kind of training, but it's first come first serve. So Supplements well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, let's follow up um, offline. But for example, Alisa, if you would be interested to host this session, or for example, to do some introduction in this session, and I guess uh, we would find other contributors who would be willing to help. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be really great. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is the deadline for the... Uh, so it's six to... weeks. So um, I want to say May 20th, only. Mm -hmm. You can change it. For example, uh, doing uh, this uh, presentation uh, in early uh, May would be totally relevant. Yeah, it, it ends May 20th. And then we will also have a booth, um, a virtual booth at the conference for Ask the Expert. So. Um, if anyone wants to sign up for that, just um, shoot me an email. Yep. Are you still looking for program committee members for the community track? Um, I have um, my committee already, but if you're interested in it, just let me know. I have, I currently have four people um, who will be grading the, the community track. Okay. If anyone uh, wants to participate, you're more than welcome. Well, that's uh, that's all the topics we have on the uh, agenda. I can't see my clock. I assume we're pretty close to time, though. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, like three minutes. So I guess the next meeting, uh, as usual, nothing changes then. Uh, do we have any other topics to discuss? No. Nope. Maybe for the next meeting, yeah, please think about the other topics to put in the list. So, but, yeah, I think we could have a more diverse agenda. Okay. okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Ole. And uh, thanks a lot uh, to Gavin for running uh, the session and the meeting notes. Uh, by the way, uh, Gavin and Evelyn, I grant you permissions. So you should be able to edit this document right away now. I, thanks. And uh, I will add it uh, to my list of what to do when uh, you are in board. Sounds good. See ya. Okay. All thanks, right. all. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, all.